Hey, welcome to our next video. Today we're going to look at mycoplasma. Being winter here in Victoria, this is when it seems to be really prevalent in our rats. So today I'm going to show you a couple of rats that are being treated currently by the vet and by our home use. Um, so the disclaimer is they sound really bad. They are under veterinary care. So please no backlash from this. I want to use the rats today to be able to show you guys what it sounds like what it looks like. So I've got one that was recently diagnosed and I've got one that's in her final stages of recovery. Okay, what we're going to do today, we're not taking over veterinary advice at all. It's more showing you what you may be sent home with and how to use those items and what to look for. So mycoplasma is one of the worst things that we're going to come across. You may be lucky enough, you've not had a rat yet with it, but there's a 50-50 chance that a rat's going to develop symptoms. All rats born in Australia have mycoplasma. It will sit in their lungs and it will just stay dormant. There will be a trigger, which is normally a secondary. This could be stress. It could be strong smells. Um, it could be a cold or something that they get into their actual their head um, and it will travel down into the lungs. One of the girls I'm going to show you today got a case of pneumonia. And from there, we cured the pneumonia and got her better but then the myco kicked in because her immune system became so low. Mycoplasma is a cell that has no wall. So treating it with antibiotics can be really difficult. And a lot of the time you need to use two antibiotics at the same time. Occasionally, if you pick it up really early, you can negate that and you can treat it off in one go. And you'll have one antibiotic, you'll do your three to four weeks and then that's it. But just remember once they've had one flare up, it may happen again down the track um, bedding can help like having good bedding can help um, anything with dust can cause irritation the irritation creates stress stress then lets myco come in so it, having well ventilated areas things like that will actually make the rat's life a lot happier so first up i actually might introduce you to our girls so excuse me one moment Okay, so this is Miss Ruby. Miss Ruby is currently going through treatment. The two girls I've got today are sisters. So as myco can be passed across during the birthing process, is it held also in the vagina of the rat mum? So as she's giving it, it can actually enter into their mucosa and the rats get infected with it. Okay, so as you can see with her, she breathes really quite heavy. She's also lost a bit of condition too. She's lost nearly 100 grams. Um, and for a big rat, that's a lot. Okay, so <clears throat> not only do we have to treat her, we also have to get her back on track and get that weight back up. All right, so at the moment, she's on what's called the nebulizer and also, which I'll show you, and also an entral, which is an, an oral medication. Okay, so I'll show you what the nebulizer looks like. Pop you back in there for a moment. Okay, so these are boxes you pick up from the $2 shop. Okay, something that you can seal the lid on. Now there's different schools of thought with this. Some people will put air holes in it. We don't. We actually use an enclosed unit. Okay, my partner wonderfully digged me a hole so we can actually put the unit in. Okay, so what we've done, the unit capsule, so this is a cheapish uh, nebulizer, human nebulizer kit, so it's a Philips one, it's a portable unit, so it's really easy, light, when we pack it all up, it all fits in the box, we just have to store the box then. It's a human nebulizer, so it came with the mouse and then the mouthpiece and the mask, but you don't need any of that with the rats. All you need is the dispensing dish, which comes apart. You pop your serum into the little bowl, pop your diffuser in, screw your cap on, okay? When it came to the mouthpieces, we actually joined two mouthpieces together. And this is just a bit of tape, sports tape. Pop it into the top and then this fits, sorry, we normally have this on the edge of the basket, on the edge of the bench. This fits into our little hole, okay? So rats are in the box. Diffuser is put in place, 
and the medication goes in. They sit in there for about four minutes. Once the chamber is empty, the rats are done. Okay, and then we always treat them afterwards. So it might be a bit of peanut butter on your finger or a bit of baby food, just so they know that they've been good um, and that this isn't a too bad experience. If you're unlucky enough that you've got stressy rats when you put them in there, having the air holes in there may help. Um, also stay with them. Pop your hand on the box. They may not be able to feel you, but they can sense you're there and it does tend to calm them down a bit. So what's normally used in the nebulizer kit is Asmol, so your Ventolin. You go to the vet and they give you a prescription. And this has to be the funniest thing is going in and getting a, a prescription filled for a black hooded rat and her name's Ruby. They always look at you really weird, but they dispense it with no issues. It doesn't look like a normal script. It's just kind of a letter from the vet, but they will dispense it without a problem. If you've never seen what the inside of an Asmol packet looks like, you end up with blister packs. They need to be kept in the dark. All the instructions are on there. Your vet will also tell you as well. All right. Inside, you get five ampules per packet, and it's as easy as breaking off. They're not the world's friendliest. Breaking off an ampule. Now, you'll also be given a antibiotic to go with it. Okay, so most of the time, your vets will dispense... Um, what their preferred is. Our vet's preferred is gentamicin to put in with the nebulizer. So one ampule into the nebulizer. So as soon as we finish this video, I'm actually going to um, treat poor little Ruby. And then you've got your gentamicin. Now it is an injectable gentamicin. So some vets will dispense it as is, which means you need to have needles in the home. If you've got young children, you're not happy to have needles in the house, just ask them to decant it and they'll pop it into a bottle with a screw lid so you can use a non-syringe or a non-needle base. Um, if you're happy to do it and you've never used it before, standard dose is two and a half mils. So always fill your syringe first to two and a half mils of air, pop it into your canister, turn upside down, shoot the air in and then pull back your dose. And sorry, it's 0.25 mils, not two and a half mils. Done. And then that's dispensed into the canister as well. All right. In goes the diffuser, on goes the lid. The air hose is then put into the bottom. This is popped into the box as shown. Turn your nebulizer on. It's done. Wait for the canister to be emptied. That's your first treatment. It's normally done, again, depending on veterinary um, request, it's normally done twice a day for five days. If there's no improvement, they'll extend that to 10 to 12 days. Sometimes rat treatments can take six weeks because it is a hard one to cure. They'll also add something else into it. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen Vibrovet. It's a cat antibiotic paste. Most people that have had myco flare-ups in the house will have one of these floating around. As soon as you have that myco and you can identify it, give them some. Give them the treatment to get before you get to the vet. The quicker you start, the more chances you have of getting the outburst of myco in that rat to diminish. Okay, so it's a shorter treatment time. It's a grain of rice. Okay. This doesn't always work, especially on the second flare-up. It needs to be put with conjunction other medications. All right. The next lot of medications they go up to are your entrils, your doxy, um, batril, and it's a liquid suspension. Most of the time rats don't like it. Doxy needs to be mixed with some other sub substance because it's not great for their gut. Um, they'll need to have it made into medicine balls. Again, most vets will teach you how to do it. We don't use Doxy, we tend to use this one, which is Entral. It's a bit sour, the rats aren't great on it. You can mix it into a, a paste and give it to them, but we're really horrible parents and I administer straight into their mouth. Okay, so I'll show you how to do it because sometimes this can be really confronting when the vet goes, no, 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 you can't mix it, just put it in their mouth. So poor little Miss Ruby can come back again. Sorry, they have a hammock in here and they've both got really comfy. 
can out. Oh, I kind of got the roll wrap. Sorry. When I prepared earlier. Okay, she is one that hates medication. Hates it. So, when you do it, you draw your medication up. Yeah, it's that time again, sweetie. Yes. Oh, you're going to be nice. Mm -hmm. Until I have to stick it in your mouth. All right. So, two ways to do rat medication. She's a really long rat, so it's kind of hard to do it this way. But claw grip around the rat, pick them up, bring them into your body. You can then use your thumb to open their mouth, okay? That works well when the rat's kind of short and can fit in your hand. She's quite long, so I actually struggle with that. So your other option is to pop her in against your body, pull jaw down, pop inside of mouth and squirt. Okay, doesn't look great, but I know she's got a full dose of medis. All right, sorry, sweetie. Hopefully, though, you've got really good rats like Miss Lilith, who is one that's recovered. So as you can see, her coats come back to normal, her weights come back. But if I tickle her and she gets excited, she has what's known as scarred lungs. So I'm not sure whether you're picking this up, but if I'm really quiet, you might be able to hear it. Okay, and then I'll give you this one as well. So this is the first stages of what Myco sounds like. Okay. So as you can see, it, it doesn't sound pretty, but these two rats are definitely under veterinary care. And they get their medis twice a day. Other things that you'll need to look at too is supporting them after. So this is the Vibravet. And this is what a good rat taking her medi looks like. Vibravet tastes really good. It's like a meat paste. So they don't have any issues taking it. Oh, sorry, Ruth. Okay. So supporting the rat after their myco flare up. So once you've got the drug therapy working and they're starting to decrease and get better, you then need to look at nutrition, supporting them and building them back up again. So there's a few things that you can use with that. Um, we find Nutrigel is one that's really good. So this is for big animals, but the rats are fine to eat it. If you've got a rat that's become quite weak, you can actually mix this into hot water and make it like a tea and use a syringe and feed them with it. If they're fine and active like these two girls but a bit low on weight, then it's just a matter of giving them the paste. Most will actually lick it off of your finger. It's quite molassesy, as you can see, kind of sticks everywhere. And when you're doing it, you kind of get covered in it. It tastes very much like Vegemite crossed with vanilla paste. Um, yes, I have tried it. Reason, I want to know what I'm trying to feed my rat, so whether they're going to eat it or they're not. It is harmless to humans. I wouldn't expect you to eat it though. All right, just something that I did. Um, our last thing that we've been using, and look, there is some data on this, but not a lot. We really struggle with getting the weight back on our rats after they've had myco flare ups. So we went in and we had a bit of a, a research on bee pollen, which they use for humans for stimulating appetite and building immune systems. So, we went to the health food shop and bought a container of bee pollen. Okay, so this has research, but not a lot in rats. So we're not recommending by any means, but just putting it out there for you guys to do your own research. It's a granulated formula and it's a couple of gran like a couple of granules in a meal. So we mix it with human porridge. It smells really yummy, but we don't know what the long-term effects of it are and whether it will continue to help them. But we're starting to use it and kind of trialing it with a few of our weaker rats and we're having good success with it. Um, last, before I finish this video, one thing that, another personal thing that we do here is we always have a easy antibiotic that you can buy at the pet shops. 
which is a bird antibiotic. It's called Oxymav B. This is great for sneezers. You mix it in their water and give them a dose of it. Um, it can be a first response. It's like the Band-Aid before you take them to the vet. Always with respiratory distress, rats need to go to the vet. So this is just a powder form and all you're doing is mixing it into their water. And you know, if you've got to get them through 12 hours before you can see the vet, if you've got it on hand, use it. All right, again, this is something we do and we're not making recommendations for products, but it can be helpful to have it. It's really good with pups, so really young pups right the way through to elderly rats. All right, hopefully this has been enough information to help you. And at the end of the day, the take home message is if your rat is suffering respiratory distress, sorry, take them to the vet. Your vet is the one that's going to be able to assist you the best with the course of treatment. They've got the records of what they used last time and whether it was successful or not and what they need to try this time. Um, some respiratory infections are only upper respiratory infections and they require different treatment to lower respiratory infections. Both of our girls have got lower respiratory. That's why they're very crunky and it's not so much a wheeze, it's more of a crackle. When it's an upper, it's more of a sneeze and a high pitchy type wheeze. Okay, they're both treated similarly, but different. All right, please, if you've got questions, leave them in the comments and hopefully we're able to help you. Um, otherwise, enjoy your rats. Bye.